Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode 29 of Anime on Draft. Mm, 29. Yeah. Um, hey. we, we missed you it. last week, so this week we're going to cover a two weeks worth of anime. Yeah. Sorry about the mic noises. That's there just like getting really excited. Yeah. It's just real excited. Like, woo! You can't keep All it right. in. Two weeks. So, um, joining as always, yeah. as you heard there, yeah. Alec. Hello. And Is the for funny? once quiet Drew. Oh yeah, it's me. Oh, <clears throat> I haven't heard anything from from him at all since this episode started. Let me let me ask yeah. you both a, a quick question. Do, it what, what's is your either of your voices going? Like feel like it's going? Like yeah. this whole day today, my voice has just been like in and out of just like cracking and oh, being okay. just uncomfortable we sh- screaming like screaming at blizzard at starcraft so, and yeah. overwatch <laughs> well, i didn't really yeah, scream yeah. this weekend oh uh, so I well did, personally cause... if my voice like sounds weird and cracks now you know why it's because okay. i'm going through puberty yeah it's it has nothing to do with blizzcon he was just going nope. he's going through puberty yep puberty he's gonna be 13 in may by mm-hmm. the way 12 by the way um Damn. So, Damn. <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, this week, the beer is the Pizza Port Swami's IPA. We will be also talking about co- Love is Like a Cocktail, <clears throat> Shokugeki no Soma Season 3, Food Wars, Recovery of an Sweet. MMO Junkie, and of course, Emoto Sai Irabai. And then we're also probably going to oh, briefly yeah. cover BlizzCon and some other yeah. anime news. So uh, why don't we get started with anime the beer? News. Drew, since you chose the beer, why don't you uh, talk about it? So this is one of my favorite IPAs because it tastes good. The end. No. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. Great. We've done it. No. Um, so in uh, Southern California, there is a place called Pizza Port and you mm-hmm. guessed it. They make pizza and they Created also by make Disneyland. really good beer. No. That's that's, I, that's what I thought when I first heard that's about it. Pizza. I thought it was good. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like a like a Toy Story themed like it's pizza pretty place, cool. but it's like no. <laughs> you've got like you've got like um you've got Buzz Lightyear on the can. Um he's like out of his jetpacks no. is coming beer. No, like beer's just shooting yeah, out. He's coming um, beer. <laughs> yeah, he's coming you beer. Have, <laughs> you don't have any of those things that you're talking about. L- literally you got none Woody of those things. drinking the beer. <laughs> From his no, you you literally you literally don't have any of those things. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wow, Disney turned like really dark and stuff. Yeah, they went real adult. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's Pizza Port Brewing, um, super good IPA, um, Southern California style IPA, six point eight percent alcohol by volume. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, just quintessentially good IPA. Um, I use it usually only comes in tall boys, and I was telling these guys like I've never actually poured it like into a glass. Excuse me, it's fluffy. So I was like, yeah, I was like super like didn't know what to expect, and it's like much more golden um, than I thought it was going to be. It, it looks like a golden ale, <laughs> but it definitely does not taste like a golden ale. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, also, um, great head um, with good head retention. Um, <clears throat> not much legs, but, uh, you know, you smell it and it smells like that stereotypical IPA. Maybe a little less fragrant, um, but that could also be because my nose is really So, Drew, I have a question for know. you then. You said you normally yeah. drink it out of a can, right? Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, is there a difference that you notice between the can and the cup? No, it tastes exactly the same. It's the same. Oh, okay, because sometimes they'll change. This, this is, uh, yeah, no, this is this is pretty much the same for me. Um, I know this is six point eight percent alcohol by volume, but this is like a session beer for me. Like this is what I drink when I go golfing. Like I'll drink. A That's lot why you of always it. come back drunk. Um, I always come back like destroyed. Yeah, yeah, dude. Um, I drink all day. I'm drunk, dude. Yeah, you. Now but, I know why. Uh, that. 
that goes that goes to say, you know, this is definitely very drinkable, at least for me. Um, I don't know what you guys think about it because, you know, I, I like the IPAs. Like, Alec, can you see yourself <clears throat> drinking this, like, several of them? or I don't know. I had, like, one sip, so I'm going to sip right. some more. Let's take but a I was listening to the description, enjoying. I was enjoying your our Toy Story conversation. I thought you were going to say your art toy stick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. too. Toy stick conversation. Our toy stick. So, Art anyways, toy stick. Um, Art toy what stick. do you what do you think of the flavor profile? Hang on, I'm, I can't really taste things because my nose today. My nose, my turret. Both of you sick. Um, no, just I'm allergies. Not sick. I'm just always stuffed up. Yeah. <laughs> um. It's your typical IPA. Um, it's hoppy. It's got that floral hops flavor. Um, citrusy. And then it just kind of smells like an IPA. But like I said, my nose is really stuffy right now. <clears throat> so it's really hard for me to pick Maybe out anything minute. Maybe you can minute. describe the smell, uh, Rolando, because to okay. me it doesn't smell like super fragrant. Or maybe that's just how it is. Um, well, both of you have stuffy noses, so... Yeah, I no. can't smell. I'm a stuffy guy. Mine smells like um, slight hop and and air. So yeah, that, that tells you I can't it, smell anything. It's it's not. It's also not as fragrant as some mm-hmm. other IPAs. So that might be hindering you guys That's as well. On top of your is, yeah. smelling difficulties at the moment. Um, because what I can, I can really get IPAs is just like a slight good. hop. Hot mm-hmm. floral yeah. smell. That's that's what I get as well. Yeah, the smell. I mean, like if I can't smell really smell anything with a stuffy nose, then the smells must be muted. Like pretty, pretty low, it's low very, in the smell area. It's got a. It's not to take away from the flavor, though. I don't think. No, it's just not super fragrant. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's got a a very good mouth feel. It's not too carbonated, mm-hmm. but at the same mm-hmm. time. It's not flat. I always talk about like the taste in the back of your throat and like the lingering aftertaste. Um, IPAs are definitely um, notorious for that. But like I said, I session this and it's just like goes down smooth. Good aftertaste. Good taste. It's you know, it's just to me to me. This is this is how a uh, an IPA should taste. It is a pleasing mouthfeel. Um Cause like I usually like to, when I take a big swig, I'll usually put some like, like in, you know, you put it on along your gums or whatever. Um, and it's like really bubbly. It feels really good. It's not super bubbly, but it's like bubbly enough and it's like cold. Um, yeah. yeah don't drink this warm. Cause I've done that too. And you don't, you don't want to do that. <laughs> no, IPAs are not good warm ever. Like, I don't think I've ever had a warm, no. I mean, a warm IPA that's been good at all. Um, it could be the best IPA that's ever been made. And like, they're just not supposed to be there. They're not, they're not the type of beer that's yeah. supposed to be drunk room temperature or warm. No beer is meant to be drunk warm, but some are meant to be drunk, like closer to room temperature, but none of them are actually, I don't think when I took that class, there wasn't any style that was like, yeah, this should be room temperature that no. he showed us at least. Um, they're always supposed to be slightly colder and then some all the way down to like fridge temperatures. Uh, it's not like red wine where it's like, yeah, you should drink this. At, it should just be out at like this temperature and that's how you're supposed to drink it. <clears throat> Beer is just not like that. Well, uh, I mean, Drew just talked about like the flavor profile um, and like also the the lingering aftertaste. So since you tend to be um, a bit more down on the IPAs, what do you think about this, Alec, like in terms of flavor? Um, I mean, I agree that there's no like bad lingering aftertaste, but for me, there definitely is like, there is lingering effects just typical to an IPA. The hops do stick around on your tongue. Um, So it's not like a light IPA. Like I would not suggest this to somebody who's never had an IPA and don't know what to, what yeah. to expect. It's not super strong. So if you're still, if you're kind of new to IPAs and you kind of like them, this wouldn't be a bad one to try, but it like the bitterness does stick around on the side sides of your tongue and the back. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So if you don't like that lingering bitterness that IPAs give, well, then first of all, you don't like IPAs. Second of all, you won't like this one after the fact. The flavor is fine, but that lingering bitterness, like for me, it's, I can, I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, I'd probably drink this again. I'm not going to buy it all the time. Uh, but I actually, I like the flavor of the beer. It's light and it's easy to drink. But uh, that lingering bitterness for me is just one of the things that turns me off to IPAs in general. And it has a little bit of that, <clears throat> but it's not bad. So, Drew. Yeah. So um, what do you, we've had quite a, like a few IPAs on this show. What, where does this, ninety like percent um, <laughs> in terms of like, I know, like in terms of like how, how much you like it. And also in terms of like comparisons of the actual flavors, what do you think about, like, how does this compare to those beers? Um, I kind of started off by saying, you know, this is like one of my favorites. I think this is like my favorite IPA, um, not only that we've had on the show, but just in general of all beer that I've uh, consumed. Um, it's this is like like I said, this is this to me is how a uh, Southern Californian IPA should taste. And I think others should aspire to this flavor. Um, it's not overwhelming. It has all the flavors that you're looking for. It's drinkable, um, great mouthfeel. Um, I think the places where it's lacking is what we talked about. Maybe color It's definitely not the t- uh, stereotypical color of an IPA as well as the, f- uh, smell, um, not very fragrance, um, at all. Um, but at the end of the day, flavor rules. And to me, this beer is just, it's, well-rounded and and good and that is why i continuously go back to it and drink it over and over and over again because it's fucking good then uh what rating would you give it it's it's to me it's between a 4.75 and a 5 i don't know if i want to pull the trigger and say it's a 5 but I've, i've kind of just convinced myself because of what i just said it's like anytime i go to a store and i'm debating and i'm like I could try something new or I can drink this. I know it's going to be good. And I most of the time go ahead and pick this. This and Sculpin for me are like they're close. And I can't remember. Did we do just regular Sculpin no. uh, on the show? We did we the, always the flavored Sculpin, ones. Right? Yeah. 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 We've we've done the flavored ones. Um, they're bored. Like I, I, I do like the flavored Sculpins. I like the regular Sculpin. I also like the unfiltered Sculpin. Um, but this to me, um, it doesn't need the extra flavors. It doesn't need the extra enhancements. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's just good. Uh, I, I, I'm going to do the five, um, Sculpin regular, probably like 4.75. And I'm going to give this straight up, straight up five. This, this, this is the go-to. This is, this is my baby. Ooh. 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 The first ever five on anime on draft. first ever yeah, yeah. five well it's hard yeah, to top yeah. that yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh <laughs> alec i know you don't um tend to like the ipas so how does this compare to the other ones we've had on the show for you to the other ones i mean like it's definitely near the top because um <laughs> when when i think of ipas we've had on the show um two come to mind the last one because it was most recent and it was the uh, down to earth That's and that true. one tasted like water. Um, that was I bad. wouldn't really call it an IPA <laughs> so much as just water in a can with like foam. And then the um, Mission Brewing Double IPA, which no, 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 I no. still double will fucking. not drink to this double fucking IPA. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to drink that. Um, but the thing is, if uh, if you go back and you listen to like. All of the ratings, if you go to all the IPA ones and then check the ratings that I've given, they've probably um, progressively gone up just because a long time ago, many, many, many moons ago, um, I was a big IPA fan until I got on a stout kick and then the bitterness of IPAs was different from that of stouts and I wasn't, it's, it's kind of one of those things that you either you have or you acquire and uh, I lost it. And now I'm acquiring it again. And so my ratings have probably gone higher throughout the year or the six months, whatever it is. Well, I guess year throughout the year that we've been doing this. Um, we've been molding you like into an IPA lad. Months. 
Um, I mean, like I said, I used to like IPAs, but I just started to like stouts more. I still like stouts more, um, but the bitterness doesn't bother my tongue as much anymore just because I'm getting used to it. Because like I said earlier, 90% of the beers we've done on our show have been IPAs. Um, let's branch out a little, guys, yeah? <laughs> um, That's all there so is. So for this just, one, though, I think IPAs. Um, the smell is it's good. From what I can tell of the little bit, it's like, you know, typical hoppy, but it seems really light on um, the color. I don't mind the color. I think it's a nice golden color. It's like a pretty beer and it does keep a decent amount of head for, for the time I poured it rather, rather roughly. And, um, it was really foamy and the foam color was like a nice white. It was like really, it wasn't like creamy. It was like super, super white. Um, so it looked really appealing with the yellow to the white. Um, so I think all in all. Um, I'll give it a, I think it's a good beer. And for me, I'd probably drink it again. Um, I'd probably buy it again, actually. So I'll give it a um, 4.25. It's probably the highest IPA you're ever going to get out of me. Mm. Wow. Alec giving an IPA higher than, higher than a three something. (laughs) Yeah. Interesting. It was between a four and a 4.25. So I'm being generous and giving it 4.25. Woohoo. Wow. All right. Well, also, right. um, go ahead. It, it's got a decent alcohol content, and it's making me feel good. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so like you kind of said about the foam, it it's got a pretty uh, what you call it, not vitriolic. Uh, it's a very um, excite excited uh, foam. Yeah, like the pour. <clears throat> yeah, and mm-hmm. surprisingly, it's not very fragrant, Volcanic. which is the it's like you kind of equate those two together and i know um at least in japan they like to equate the extra head with kind of freshness because like you kind of get the aroma of the beer Mm -hmm. and um this beer surprisingly doesn't have that much of an aroma which is kind of odd but i do like the mouthfeel the color is a nice golden um golden hue and excuse me um it's just the right amount of carbonation what i will kind of knock it on is the lack of fragrance and i don't particularly like the selection of hops i feel like for me it's lacking that kind of kick that i want from an ipa Um, it's very subdued and you do have that lingering taste of bitterness in the back of your mouth, but it's not like certain IPAs, you can have a kick and there'll be a, a drier IPA. So like, it'll leave less of a linger in the back of your mouth, but what you get is like a punch to the face or there are some IPAs where there's not as much of a kick, but the complexity of the hops together tends to stay in the back of your throat and then you kind of get to decipher the bitterness afterwards. So this one's kind of an in-between. So I agree with the fact that it's more of an intermediate IPA. So if you're not a big IPA fan, this is like the next level up, like the next step up to go to the higher, higher alcohol content, more bitter IPAs. Um, but in this case, it's not my favorite IPA. And because that's Sculpin. <laughs> well, yeah, that's Sculpin. But like there are other IPAs that tend to kick you in the face better that leave more of an impression on me. This one's kind of more like a standard IPA and it's not a bad IPA. I think it's actually very good. But for me, it's compared to the other IPAs we have on the show. It just doesn't have that wow factor. So um, I'm really torn on whether to give it like a 3.75 or a 4. But it's, I don't know if it's, if I'm clouding my judgment from what we've had before already. It's a very drinkable IPA. It's not bad. But at the same time, like. Personal preference. Personal preference. Like I tend to want either more of that punch in the face or the complexity of the flavors. I actually think that the down to earth had a nicer um, mixture of hop flavors, 
although the actual beer itself was meh. So, mm. but I, I think this is still a better beer than the down to earth, but I just don't think the flavor profile is as appealing to me. So mm-hmm. what I did think, I give uh, the down to earth three to like... five, right? So I can't give it below yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like this is, I'm torn between three, seven, five and four because it's not, um, I don't know. I'll just go with my gut. Three seven five because All right. it's not a bad beer. So it's still <clears throat> three seven five is still like a above seventy percent to seven seventy five percent, which is actually mm-hmm. good. But I feel like I want more from it. It's not a beer that I will say don't drink, but I wanted a little more from it. Just judging from how much you hyped it up to me, Drew, and uh, it's just not. Would you speaking to me? Would you say it's like it's like very well rounded? Like that that's that's why I gave it the rating that it has because like I agree with you, um, it it is lacking in like some of the, like the flavor departments because it's not like that like bam fuck you right in the face uh, hot Ooh. flavor and stuff like that, it's which I do enjoy to some extent because I mean we both like the mission, um, yeah, and that yeah. was a very hoppy a very <laughs> hoppy beer, um, and and I like that, but I think I I just feel like the and the reason why I rated it so high it's like this is like very well rounded it's 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 got everything that I'm looking for, um, in terms of like a good drinkable um, tasty sort of beer so that's that i think that's why i rate it so high um but yeah i definitely agree with you the the flavor uh can it could be more but uh at the end of the day it's it's like the full package for me it's got it's got everything <laughs> i think that's why i enjoy it so much i think um part of the reason that my rating is probably higher than rolando's on this case is because there's l- like less of that hoppy punch and, and for me, that's in hops. That's what I'm looking for or in like in IPAs, because I actually want to be able to drink the beer that I buy uh, right <laughs> now. And I obviously don't have the <laughs> the 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 what's it? The like the palate. The My gene palate hasn't built up the, the, gene. the tolerance or whatever for IPAs again that I used to have. And so I want something that's a little less punchy. It still has the flavor. I don't want something that doesn't taste like an IPA and then calls it's an, itself an IPA because then that's just frustrating. Um, but so it calls itself an IPA and it still has that hoppy bitterness to me. And so I think that's like that makes sense. So if you if you really like that hoppy punch, then then definitely like it, it's not compared to like the mission. It's not going to have that same kind of punch. Yeah. I mean, we're also grasping at straws here because like it's clearly a good beer. Yeah. yeah. But <clears throat> Like 3.75 is one of the higher ratings in general that that we've had in the previous weeks. <laughs> so mm-hmm. to have that as the lowest score is still actually really good. Um, oh, definitely. So you got to try and cut down the people at the top, dude. Got to dra- yeah. grasp at those straws, man. <laughs> <laughs> Over overall, it's a good beer, and I'm definitely going to have it again in the future when I'm looking for yeah. a pretty if you wanna, decent IPA. If you want to level up uh, your IPA game, start with something easier um, than this. This is like step two. And then if you're really looking to get punched in the face and you do enjoy this one, that's when you're going to want to look to like those missions um, and some of the it. other uh, stronger stronger versions. So I think it. it's worth it. Not worth it. Alec doesn't. It's uh, not worth it. I think uh, before we move on, I think too like uh, the Sculpin would be like maybe like a level two, but sort of getting to a level three, and then like level three would be like double IPAs or like unfiltered Sculpin okay, and things like that. So if you're if you're un uh, not un- unacquainted, but I guess yes, unacquainted, but if you're not baptized into the IPA drinking culture, I guess definitely do not get anything that's like a double IPA or unfiltered not. triple you will IPAs. Not enjoy it. <laughs> so moving on Drupal Omega arcade edition. We had yeah. two <laughs> episodes of love is like a cocktail. One of them was a spritzer and the other one was, was it a banana cooler? Banana, was it? banana cocktail bullshit. or something like Some, that. Yeah. Something. Banana it bullshit. was a non-alcoholic There's no alcohol in banana it. drink. It was banana something and something. Yep. So um, I wanted to briefly touch upon these two episodes. Uh, what did you two think of the drinks, and uh, what did you think of the episodes themselves? 
I uh, wanted to make the banana cocktail until I heard that there was no alcohol in it. And I'm like, that's just boring. It's like a smoothie or something. <laughs> <laughs> but if there's like, if they were going to get like banana schnapps or something, I'm like, let's make this awful drink and like puke. <laughs> See, um, I had a different opinion about that drink. And I was sitting there like, <laughs> okay, you made this non alcoholic banana drink. And I was thinking, hmm, we could make a margarita type drink, you know, like slushy, and then add alcohol mm-hmm. to it. And that would be really bomb. Yeah. Alone, I'm, I don't think it would be awful, but I think it would be all right. I'm like, eh, I don't want it alone. But what alcohols could I pick? And I think it would be really good as a smoothie. That's what I was kind of thinking. Like, probably hmm, rum. Make it, yeah, rum or I was thinking rum. vodka because there's really no flavor to vodka. Yeah. I just don't generally don't like the flavor of bananas on its own. Uh, it's just, yeah. you know, like I'd eat a banana, but using that as like your cocktail, uh, artificial <laughs> fucking banana flavor or whatever, you oh, use oh, real oh, bananas God. and you blend them up. <laughs> it's, it's just not like the f- flavor itself of a banana is pretty like subdued. So. All right. I'm going to make a banana cocktail mm-hmm. next time we all hang out. I'm going to like blend up bananas and do something magic and be like, holy shit, this is amazing. Just, just you wait. All right. Well, you surprised me. puke. Um, no, you won't puke, I promise. <laughs> what did you think of the episodes themselves, though? I mean, it's uh, more of the same. Three minutes yeah. of goofy fun. It was goofy, it was fun, yeah. Uh, the uh, the husbando is going to be, like... He's husband of the year. He's husband of the year, yeah. yeah he like ca- She was asleep, and he's like, oh, you work so hard, let me carry you to bed. <laughs> like... Definitely, uh, let me, definitely husband. Let me make you curry at uh, two in the morning because yeah. you're a fat bitch. He, <laughs> he, he's the work at home dad, kind of like in yeah. Madoka. He's what I aspire to be, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's a there's a term uh, that you'll you'll see on like a, a bunch of like Filipino like variety shows, and they like to refer themselves as housebands. House, <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'll be a stay-at-home dad. Yeah, <laughs> M- Madoka dad. This guy, like, they're just Dude, serving those what like, powerful bus- be, business women. Man, their their Dude. job is to cook great food, get your satisfy your woman, get her drunk, go to the gym, just be hot, and just like go and you know. That sounds like the life. Um, that sounds like a wonderful like, life, dude. <laughs> exactly, dude. Yeah. I've I've joked about this for years, like in college, like with my buddies. I'm like, that's that's the life right there. Just dude. like be be the house husband to a uh, like a businesswoman <laughs> who's like all powerful and just like satisfy a type her. A like, personality. There you, there you go, person, dude. I love cooking. All right, hell yeah, I would be. More more than happy just to chill and cook like oh dude then i get to eat my own food and it's delicious yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't want to be a chef because that would be your job restaurant sounds and that would awful. be your job yeah you, know, you have job. like Being a uh, just just like <laughs> just <laughs> no <laughs> you have just like in the no show kids. she's like she's like she's like so uh she's like so grateful to you and then she's like carry me to bed because i'm gonna smother you with uh with cuddles and you're just like all right that's gonna lead somewhere else you know <laughs> oh no oh don't don't you do that don't you, you dare have cuddle that me. i think that's what he uh-uh. says <laughs> Don't cuddle me. You know where that no. goes. Cuddling leads to spooning. <laughs> spooning leads to forking. Next thing you know, we've got children, and we don't need those. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good mm-hmm. show. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So fun to watch. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I I did kind of think with the 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 girl's personality. It's just like on this on the latest episode, she's like, I can't drink, and she started to like. I know it's her work that's making her look really like burnt out and stressed but it kind of also looked mm. like she was having alcohol withdrawals so it was like <laughs> Damn, she must be really alcoholic it was both dude it was both <laughs> she's working all the time and she's like i haven't had a drink in like six days uh, uh. <laughs> but uh i don't know it's she's like it's still a really give me give me your show. banana <laughs> Well, if you're used to if you're used to coming home after a hard day's work and then having like really good cocktails be made from made for you from husband mm-hmm, of the year mm-hmm. and then you're like I'm just gonna sit at home and work all day and then you're stressed out but you're like I can't drink you're gonna be like God all I want is a really good cocktail from my husbando of the year. Well, we can't. all know why Can she can't about- have the cocktails. It's because she's not gonna get any work done if she's getting all cuddly with her husband. 
Yeah. 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 yeah but we she also, wants it. Uh, she also talk it. about his, uh, his uh, liquor cabinet. He had like fucking 50 bottles up in there, dude. He's like dude, ready to go. Any he situation. He was a professional bartender got it. before yeah. he got married. Yeah, I know. He's a, prof- a professional god, dude. Dude, he owned a restaurant and he was bartender, chef. He did it all alone with no waiters. Yeah. 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 God. All right. Well, yeah. moving yeah. on. So we've got quite a bit to cover with Shokugeki, <clears throat> kind of the climax of the Moon Festival. So, uh, Alec, I wanted to open it up to you. Um, we kind of have the kind of, the rise of Yukihira Soma and his Chinese in, sty- I guess, stylized restaurant. It's still kind of his inspired cooking, food. but like it's Chinese inspired. Yeah. And mm-hmm. kind of the repercussions of how his stall did versus Kuga's stall. So uh, mm-hmm. what did you think of these last couple of episodes? Um, I thought it was cool when they brought in the... So you have... <clears throat> his name was Kuga, right? You just said that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yellow-haired bro. I thought it was cool that they brought in his whole... Because we didn't know that he had that um, that deal with the number one seat guy. Uh, about like how if he... Mm-hmm was top all five days or whatever this year that he would have a Shokugeki, so he doesn't get to have one. And then <clears throat> um, um, Yukihira doesn't get to have one either because he didn't beat him overall. Um, and so I just think uh, I thought that was, you know, a cool development they threw in there. Um, I mean, like, you could have seen it coming probably, but it was it was cool that they had threw that parallel in where one at the at that luncheon they had, you know, with the the 10 what do they call them the 10 elite 10 elite 10 10. yeah with the elite 10 um and then i'm curious what's going to happen with the school now that um arena's that's her name right arena yes Mm -hmm. i I don't know her name smug blonde bitch um (laughs) her dad's back and he's obviously nuts and he's going to kick out all the like non noble people it's again you know and then they the elite 10 voted to kick out the Grandmaster. They said he, they have power equal to maybe Ab- greater, Ab- but above. in the end, he owns the school, and he should just be like, "Fuck you guys! This is my <laughs> school. I'm not leaving. This is stupid." Like in the end, the whole school and everything is a corporation, and the people who own all, like, run all the restaurants, are gonna be like, "No, I don't want to work under this guy. I'll leave." And then this whole place is gonna suffer, and then those guys are going to, and then they won't have that guy be around because they're like, oh, we'll just shut down the school instead. Anyways, obviously it's an anime and it's not realistic. So that's a moot point, but I liked it. It was fun. Well, Drew there. That's everything I thought. Um, <clears throat> I kind of want to breach the subject with you, but what did you, what did you think about the whole return of De- Mr. Daddy issues, inducing daddy issues into Arena? What did you think about this whole deal? Daddy. Oh my God. Nani. So we're going to get to see a side of uh, Arena that uh, we haven't seen before. And it started to come out like the second she laid eyes on him. She oh. she turned from smug ass bitch in charge, like badass. You know, I'm fucking great at everything. The second she sees him, boom, flips that switch and is like, uh, uh, Dad, I, I, I want to please you. Like we get the the dare side of the uh, sundere, if I can, if I can be so bold. Um, so we're gonna get to see a side of Arena that we do the not get to see side? the dare, the dare, dare. side, the dare. The dare. Uh, we're gonna see. Like, I dare we're gonna you get to see that. To we're gonna dare. see like the. <laughs> 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 we're gonna get to see like the vulnerable side of her, and uh, that's where Yukihira is gonna pick up the place of his dad and be like, you know what, Arena, I'm gonna support you just like my dad supported you when you were like a two and a half second year old and couldn't eat anything <laughs> from anybody and it was on a um, respirator <laughs> <laughs> so uh we're we're gonna get to see that and i'm excited because i like Me we've too. talked about it like Al- alice is the best uh Nikiri, but uh you know, uh, Irena's right up there, and it's it's nice to kind of see her get uh, knocked down a few pegs because, you know, all she is is like, I'm better than you at everything. And to see her vulnerable, like, okay, hand emoji, like, let's get that dare, the dare side. Yeah, let's I'm go. tired of like, her just I'm all being in. so, like, oh, I'm the best. It's like, come on, we all know you're not. Like, there's going to be something where you suck at. Otherwise, you wouldn't be a student and you would just be working professionally already. Well, she, she doesn't, and she doesn't suck at it. I mean, even the dad says, like, I trained you to be this chef like you have the best palate in the world like 
all he wants is for her to like not stoop herself down to like the lower levels and like lower level it's like literally anyone who he doesn't deem worthy because it seems very arbitrary you have like the <laughs> best culinary people in the world at the restaurant and he's just like these aren't worthy They're like animals what you what you when you're serving them it's not even food like the only like people Swap. who should be eating actual food is like the upper echelons who i decide like which is probably just like the elite 10 at this point like what <laughs> There, I um, anime, man. The, you, you had I, the handmaiden was like, oh, super excited when you here showed up too. So that was a uh, kind of cool, yeah. Hisako, she seems to enjoy Yukihira. Um, she likes him. I, I do have to well, say, she, he that, fucking uh, built her out, but that's another thing. Yeah. It, it's not surprising that Irina kind of froze up and <laughs> was kind of terrified when her father showed up because, I mean, if your father was Dracula. Like, wouldn't you be fucking terrified whenever he shows He's up? Gonna drink just, my like, you blood just freeze again. in place. So, so, so quickly off of that, his character design reminds me of a. This is Monogatari references. He's a, mm. a blend of Kaiki and um, Ugi, and like just mix them together. And he has a very similar personality to those two. And I, I love, I love his character design. Um, it is like super dope. He's a fucking badass. But go, go on. <laughs> No, that's all I wanted to input. It's just like he looks like Dracula. Yeah, Dracula. yeah he does. He's got that yeah, pale his, skin his, and like his. the fucking slender hair back black suit. Like he's mm-hmm. Dracula. We all know that in the end, I you can hear is going to do something that he only saves shows the up day. At night, full moon. And then Megumi is going to be in the background, <laughs> being a goddess, being innocent, and just like actually doing all oh, the she's work. So she's, she's so she's gonna pure. She's going to do all the work. And then you, Yuki here is going to take all the credit. Can you believe, like, <laughs> she's, like, got the customer service and the hospitality, and then Yuki here has got the cooking mm-hmm. skills. Like, can you believe, like, how oh, amazing that combination God-pairing. would be? Like, for Dude, an actual, like, married already. restaurant. Yeah, they need to, like, hook up. But we all know that's not going to happen because no, it won't. the main girl is supposed Yuki to be... Yuki here is asexual. Well, and yeah. Yuki here is asexual. He's like, cooking is good. I like cooking. No, he's like, I'm married to cooking. <laughs> yeah. And his dad. I think, um... <laughs> I think I think what we're gonna get, um, and they kind of mentioned it in the next week's preview. Um, I view Alice as well. There's a couple different things I want to talk about. First, I view Alice kind of as a juxtaposition to um, the dad, who she's like this white Scandinavian princess, um, and he's princess. more like this dark, omin- ominous mm-hmm. figure, and they're related. So I think we're gonna get um, their uh, kind of infighting next, and they kind of mentioned that in the preview a little bit. But also, um, I know that the uh, the leader of this uh, the student council, or not the student council, but the elite ten. Um, What's his name? Uh, to uh, Tukasa. He's uh, he was labeled as like the white knight um, who doesn't put his soul into any of the food. He just respects ingredients so much that he's like the food is um, my king mm-hmm. and I'm like the noble knight uh, to that. And I feel like that's going to juxtapose against, again, this dark figure. Um, and which is strange to me because he voted for, um, you know, um Arena's father to come back and take over the school. So I want to kind of know his thoughts on that. Um, because again, I think just about everybody in the student council voted except for uh, Irina and um, Kuga. Kuma Bear. Irina, Kuga, yeah. Ishiki Senpai, and um, um, mm-hmm. who's the last one I'm not thinking of? Was it the the the, the broker? No, he um, voted for did he vote? the other. Yeah, I would be surprised if he didn't. I'm forgetting um, the last. I know seat. the the lo- the lolly the lolly girl, blue haired girl, um, first place guy, business guy. Brindo definitely did. Yeah, I don't know, but anyway, Kuga um, guy. No, Kuga. Yeah, didn't there was vote like so him. it was set. Is, I know. <laughs> yeah. So it was it, it was uh, seven of the of the ten six of the uh, ten. voted and or sorry six of the six ten. So. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm interested to see if Sukasa has like alternative motives towards this because again, the juxtaposition of black and white, um, and things of that nature. I don't know. Shit, shit's shit's going down, boys. Like, 
man, this show knows how to like grab you and like pull you in. Cause like the first couple episodes were like, you know, all right, it's the same characters. I like all these characters, you know, we're doing another like tournament sort of arc, you know, whatever. And then bam, hits you, hits you right in the nuts with uh, this guy coming in. You're like the whole school's about to change. Like what the fuck is going to happen? Yeah. Nothing's going to uh, change. Megumi's still at the school and she's a goddess. All right. Nothing's going to change. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I, I kind of think that it's going to cause a, a division. And so, like, you've got, no, like, the remaining Elite 10 members that don't agree with this. And then you've got the up, up-and-coming up future Elite 10 that, like, they're all being raised under the Nakiri Grandmaster, Erina's grandfather. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, clearly Erina is on that side. She kind of well, fears her father and, and, we, and all that. Definitely. We know, mm-hmm. too, that um, just because watching the opening... Um, the grandfather is going to come to Soma and like give him like some sort of ultimative. He's like, Hey bro, like I'm going to sit down under the moon, the full moon and like bow Shirtless. to you. And like, you need to save the school. I, Cause I think what's going <laughs> to, right. I think what's going to happen is, um, Soma's dad Yuki-Hira's had dad some, is a God. yeah, he, well, he had something to do with, um, the, the dad or Azami is his name. He had something to do with him getting kicked out of the school and banned. And he's going to be like, I see this potential in you. That's why, you know, I wanted to bring you into the school and whatnot. You He'll have to beat him in a show who lead the way. So yeah, something, something happened under uh, the moon to get him out of there. Shirtless. <laughs> well, because because we we know that Arena sees um, Soma's dad as kind of like that father figure and things like that. So something happened in the past um, for that, and we know that um, uh, Soma's dad um, is a big fan of uh, the grandfather. So I bet his dad was supposed gonna... to be first seat too. Maybe. We'll find well, out. Well, he's he's just yeah. like he's like he's like Soma, like where he's like, I just want to cook good food and like do crazy shit. Well, like, he, he can he's care about, less about the like, peanut butter with squid. Soma's <laughs> Soma's and like he kind of reflects his father, but like they're about the side mm-hmm. of personality. And when you get that image of Sakasa yeah. and he just doesn't let he bows down to the ingredients, like he doesn't put any of his sort of mm-hmm. touch to the food. That's kind of like mm-hmm. It's seen as his strength, but it's also his biggest weakness. And so, like, that's the difference in the two philosophies. And so, like, you can kind of see Yukihiro's dad. Soma's dad is... He doesn't put any of his own touch on it, nor does he put any of, like, the customer's touch on it. Because Yukihiro's dad is all about... Or Soma's dad is all about making food for the customers that they can... Pleasing the customer. Yeah, pleasing the customer. And he's like, well, I'm going to make it so that the ingredients are their best. But that's not necessarily what the customer needs or whatever. And it's, and that's where, like, uh, Soma's dad is the best at or whatever. So Yeah, mm. so... It'll be it's cool. A, it's, a, cool. It's, a, it's a difference in philosophies and the fact that Yukihiro's dad <laughs> is the mm. kind of the epitome of cooking for... Um, putting yourself into your cooking and cooking for the whoever is going to receive it. You can see that in how um, he treats um, Soma's mom and him and how he treats his customers mm. at the diner. Whereas Erina's father is kind of like the highbrow, I'm better than thou, that kind of... You, I know you better. Can, if you don't like this, you don't like good food. Yeah, like you... Like, I'm not, like, Scott is kind of, like, in that aspect where he's just, like, he's not even asking if you like the food or not because he's, like, he he's that full of himself that he knows that you enjoyed the food. Yeah. So it's a difference exactly. in philosophies that we'll see clash in the future. I'm going to tell you right now, but I don't want a nine-course meal, even if they're all small. That's just so much work. You've never <laughs> Have had you one, had dude? a it's, really... It's actually, it's actually nice. I don't nice. want one. It's just a... It's work <laughs> for me. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. You, it's, no, it's not no, no. about the food. It's about the experience. It's the experience <laughs> behind it. It's a waste of my time. <laughs> you, if you ever get a chance to have a g- really good tasting mm-hmm. menu from a, a highly acclaimed chef, I would... I have, and please, I'm just like, Please yeah. do it. Please do it. It's I'm just like, it's so dope. much work. No, I've done it. It's work, man. I'm just, nah, I just want to eat my food and go home. <laughs> Different customers, guys. Soma's got it right, okay? Yeah, go to, you go to the diner. We'll go to our high-end uh, That's fine, dude. I'm going to go to Soma's we'll take dad's off our- diner and eat <laughs> just as good as you at a quarter of the price and half the time. <laughs> it's a different type of cuisine and experience. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, I've, I've, it's I've, experience. Yeah. I've had it. It's just... Anyways. Anyways. All right. We're... We're... 
dabbling too long in this, so why don't we go ahead and move on into our happy hour. So, recovery of a MMO junkie. These past couple of episodes, we're kind of seeing what is going to be essentially Lily and Hayashi finding out their true identities in real life of Sakura and Mori Mori Chan. So, why don't we uh, start with Drew? What did you think of these last two episodes? Um, j- j- it's it's what we've been talking about. It's what we expected. Um, for some reason, the only people who play this MMO live in the same town or within like you know within Tokyo, the Greater Tokyo limits, and they're all like see each other on a daily basis. I guess that's a a fun coincidence. And they even like poke fun at that. They're like. Uh, I think it's uh, Lily Chan, a.k.a. Uh, Sakurai. He's, like, at his computer, and she's explaining to him as Hayashi, like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to go on this date. And blah, blah, blah. He's like, there's no way. This is a coincidence. But if I flip the genders, it makes so much sense. It's just, like, it's it's way too convenient, but that's what makes it kind of fun. Um, and, and we know what's going to happen. And I, the okay, so the thing that, that was, like, triggering me the most was uh, Sakurai's, uh, his, I thought it was his bro, uh, Ko, Kohai, Kowai, or whatever the fuck his name yeah. is. Um, I thought he was going to be a fucking bro. And he's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I stalked her and, like, found out her information so I could, like, set you up with this date. And then he's just, like, this huge bitch. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm not actually going to tell you, like, when the date was supposed to go. I'm just going to, like, make you show up on the wrong day and shit like that you see it that way it's like well it's, it was like one one episode was like yeah i set this up for you um and then you know we're all gonna go together and then like he the next episode he's like oh yeah um my he doesn't say it but like he found uh sakurai found out that like the trip got canceled and he's like oh the days <clears throat> switched and things I, like that i i I don't Go see ahead, it that way ahead. because I feel like that guy's kind of a an airhead. And so mm-hmm. he like I don't think he even realized that he told um Moriko the wrong day because he's not even in town. And so had he she not had the conversation with Sakura over <coughs> over the MMO, like he wouldn't have the inclination that she would be showing up to meet on the wrong day cuz no, but he's uh, he's going to show up like he's going to show up late, but he's going to show up to the date because I thought on the preview we saw all three of them drinking together. No, because that guy said the guy said, no, the the drinking thing is tomorrow, whereas she had the wrong day and thought it was the current day. And so he called him to make sure. No. And he's like, no, I won't. It's not tonight. I won't be there until tomorrow afternoon. See, I didn't see that way because I. That's at literally first I what saw, they said I in the show. That way. But when I uh, I watched the preview for the next episode, it was all three of them like drinking together. So he's gonna like show up late. I think he's trying to like sp- uh, spite um, Sakurai um, because like he wasn't. He was originally going to do that, and then he like sees her in the convenience store. And he's like, "Wow, she had like huge tits." Like. And then he's like remembering all these things like, oh, she sounded like really nice and like we bonded through work and stuff like that. He's like, I'm going to take her for myself. That's how that's how I saw it. But he he didn't even show up to the date, though, if that's what his plan was, because he's not in town. No, no, he he's he's going to show up. He is actually in town. Like he misled Sakurai on purpose because he didn't want him involved anymore because he's like taking taking her because like in the preview there there's like he was drinking a glass of wine and she was there and uh, the other guy was there too so i think he is going to show up he's just an airhead and shows up late i don't i might be wrong i don't think that's <clears throat> the case alec what you can be the tiebreaker <laughs> um i mean you know you never know it could have just been that she had the wrong day written down mm-hmm. boom I, I can see that happening boom. too i mean <laughs> I don't know what to expect until we get to the next episode. I hope he's being a bro because I was like on board. I'm like, yeah, this guy's tight. Like he's trying to like set it up for him. And then maybe I'm just misinterpreting it because I'm retarded, um, which is I'm, very likely. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on because in the next episode, I did see like she was drinking with a dude and and then they had those. Like I'm not misleading. crazy, right? Like I, I did. I did see that. Right? Well, no. What yeah. I, like there was I a scene the where was that was they went on. A, they she and the other guy went drinking on a date and he's worried yeah. about the fact that they're on a date that is what i got from oh. the preview. 
So I, I, I saw something, and then they it seemed very misleading in many ways, like because they had the the um <clears throat> they had the black haired dude and the blonde haired dude uh, in mm-hmm. all of it, and then they had the they like showed him talking, and then she was like, I don't know what it is, but it makes my heart flutter, blah blah blah, all that crap, and so it's a misleading preview. So I'm not really trying to take much from it. Yeah. Um, what I get from the episode is. It could go like multiple ways. Either she just wrote down the wrong day and showed up late and Sakurai or whatever his name is. Um, Sakura, is it Sakura? Sakura. I don't know. The blonde haired dude. He Sakurai, shows Sakura. up. He's like, oh, it's a it's a coincidence, but like I'm going to go check anyways. And then he just happens to go and then she happens to be there on the wrong day. And it's like, oh, you know, or or like maybe the other dude said it was the right day and then like expected him to find out somehow. And then he just showed up anyways. I don't know. But and then that would just be random because he doesn't know that they're friends in the MMO unless he's the fat guy in the MMO. And he actually does know both of them. And he's like, haha, I know who both of you are. But that would just be crazy turn of events so like i i'm not really like because of how misleading the images were in the preview i'm not really trying to get anything out of it so i don't at this point i don't think that the other guy is being a douche um but who knows you know like i i think it seemed more to me like she put the wrong day and then soccer is like oh well I'm going to check because what if it isn't a coincidence and then he go like what if she's just there on the wrong day and then he goes and she's there. So I I hope that's the case. Yeah, it'd be. But who knows with like animes like this, if they want to introduce a new kind of conflict or I mean, I thought it was kind of cool that they brought in when when I saw the green hair of the guy at the convenience store, I was like, don't tell me this is the guild guild leader. leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then they did that. And then he knows both of them are like gender swapped gender. yeah yeah and yeah. so he knows both of them and i liked the little whisper because he was like so what do you think a girl should wear and he's like dude i just Bro. got off the subject why did you bring it back and i was like oh this is great um and so it, it's just like i'm i'm interested to see how um the guild leader plays in the relationship between sakura and the main girl just because he obviously doesn't seem to have any like ulterior motives. Whereas hope, the other guy uh, seems like he could. So I hope he ends up with Lilac cause uh, Lilac's dope as well. <clears throat> Dude. Lilac is uh, the cutest girl. Yeah. They're Except after a haircut. Young. Yeah. They're both younger. The, um, what's yeah, her name? Yeah. The main like girl Mariko after, after the haircut. haircut. She looks like oh, no. after she did all her stuff and she doesn't have like, they don't make her look like she's a cave rat, <laughs> but I'm sure oh, she had long hair the seaweed and she did makeup. I thought she did still had like a, a kind of again. like cute charm, even when she was still like disheveled she did, and she long did. hair. I mean, she had a, a uh, charm, like but like hair, in terms of just like how they made her look, she just looked better after when she was all dressed up. Well, I mean, yeah, if they she did long like hair and dressed prettier, her. She spent like the short hair. She spent like four hundred, five hundred dollars on on clothes and haircut. Yeah, because she's an elite meat. She's an elite neat. <laughs> I'm not saying she would look better that way than she would with long hair the same way. I'm just saying she looks mm, better now mm. because she actually cleaned oh, for up. Sure. For sure. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> elite Moving neats, on, dude. Yeah. That's what I want to be. <laughs> Moving on from the elite neats. Um, elite neats. We have uh, neats. Emoto Sai Irabai, and we've got two episodes to talk about, and they're both involving Itsuki and his struggles to write, so... Uh, Alec, why don't we start with you? What did you think of the past couple of episodes? Uh, was the last episode where he went to Hokkaido? No. No. Not this past one, the one before it, I mean? No. The one before. What was the one that before? was episode three. What, were the, what was the first episode of the two we're talking about? I know this last one, but the, I watched the other one so long ago. The oh, first the episode. Accountant. <clears throat> the, the accountant, accountant is lit. End of episode. That's just, she's <laughs> the dopest character who showed up so far. She is lit, and it's hilarious. <laughs> call, call me Onechan. It's like, okay, okay. <laughs> Dude, so good. The accountant, that was that was one of the best episodes so far just because it was hilarious. Like, what's this big boob girl little sister? It's about a big boobed little sister. <laughs> so no, and then he started she started naming oh the names of like the fucking games he had, and they were like, fuck me, Onichan, and like Yeah. It's just, like, like what the she's fuck? like, what is this? 
<laughs> and he has to explain she's it to tired, her. Dude. Yeah, obviously she knows what it is because she's older than all of them. And she's just like getting a kick out of making them explain this. But <clears throat> I also like how he was like, how she was like, oh, you should, um, you should make these figures research. And he's like, they're not just materials. And she's like, but if you make them materials, you can save money and buy more figures. Do what you think is best. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden he just changes his tune. That episode was great. All right. It was great. The, the, this most recent episode was really good too. Uh, when he was stuck in that room and he was like, like thinking about all the different people, I, I'm sure it'll lead to developments in relationship statuses between different people. And that's all I have to say about that. Drew? Yeah. Um, I feel bad for Miyako because she's so desperately... She so (laughs) desperately wants it. Like, she fucking wants it so bad. Like, in particular, the uh, episode five where he's like, oh, I'm going to karaoke. And she's like, this is my fucking chance, dude. We're going to go get drunk and sing karaoke. And he's like working there to like to like hide from his editor. <laughs> like, And she's like, well, that backfired. And then and then the episode before she shows up and she's like, hey, you know, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I have to meet like with my accountant. I'm like actually an adult and and just like constantly cucked. Like I, I feel bad for her because she, she's a good character, but just, you know. She shows up at the Off door. The hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to see an account. She's not. Oh, you're she's actually not an adult. Eternal oh. friend zone. Eternal she's also. Zone. Uh, she's also not doing herself any favors by saying, oh, here's my obligatory Valentine's Day chocolate. What she needs yeah. to do is like she's, get him on his own. And she's like, not hey, showing I, I, made, being, she's being I made this c- personal cindere. chocolate with you. About yeah. it. Yeah. Well, not even because like she like fucking wants it. I don't know. She's I don't mean, know. Somewhat because she's going, oh, well, yeah, no, I'm not being honest with her. It's not being like. Yeah, she's not being yeah, like yeah. the crazy like I hate you, but not really. She's just like no. There's di- there are she's different just, types. Yeah. She's the she's yeah. the type yeah, that yeah. likes like, to not be honest with her feelings. Yeah, yeah. And then because she's rooting you know, for uh, Cat Girl. Yeah, because she doesn't even know her. Then own there's feelings. her who's like fuck me, like <laughs> <laughs> let me suck on this egg. She's the eternal. Um, Miyako's the eternal uh, suffering. Mm-hmm. Um heroin whereas uh naita is like kind of like hey i'm here and i'm gonna take you no matter what you say and then you just (laughs) like with a weak with a weak main character like itsuki he's just like uh uh, okay yeah yeah. i mean i think he liked her in the first place but like before she even became that way but like he was like you're better than me i've read your books and he's the type that will get caught up in her pace yeah Mm-hmm. But the uh, and then she sent the uh, the card of the two of them in the towel from the hotel room. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. do your best. I'm your wife. And he's like, oh, I'm crying. And then he write, wrote the the book. I was like, dude, I would read this. This sounds dope. I think I think uh, at the end of the day, like he loves all his friends and he likes mm-hmm. spending time with all of them. And, and his little uh, sister, you know, brother. He's yeah, <laughs> he's he's having he's having a hard time himself coming to terms with like some of these feelings because like he had, at one end of the spectrum he has this girl throwing himself at her and like he still feels bad about denying her and things like that and then at the other end of the spectrum he has like this supporting good girlfriend who's attractive and maybe he doesn't see her as that potential but she definitely sees him Excellent. so they all need to like kind of they all need to kind of come together. You know, and and figure that shit out. Um, <clears throat> and at the same time, we have uh, Haruto um, competing along with uh, Itsuki. Like, I'm going to be the best author. No, I'm going to be the best author. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have Itsuki, you know, at the end of the episode, kind of coming in there. And uh, his um, light novel is becoming a manga. So he's starting to come up. And I think uh, Haruto is kind of feeling the pressure a little bit. Because he sees uh, Itsuki having more potential than him and things like that. So it's going to drive everybody. Um, everybody's a good character. I really like this show. I And I just want to say this in general. Like, I thought this season of anime was going to be shit. And we have some, like, really, really good anime that that have come out of this. Would, would you guys kind of agree with that? Yeah. It's kind I didn't of... think it was going to be shit. The whole thing. I saw some good ones. Like, Ancient Majesty of Bride. Well, it's <laughs> it's definitely over-performing compared to what the outlook yeah. looked like. Definitely. Um what's Definitely. the name of the friend zone girl? Miyako. Uh yeah. Miyako. So everyone needs to learn from this that you aren't friend zoned, you friend zone yourself. 
okay? <laughs> and she friend zoned herself by acting all like oh, a friend. No, I don't like you. <laughs> I'm a friend. And it's like, oh, well, she doesn't like me. I guess she's just a friend. Okay? So whenever people are like, oh, she friend zoned me. No, you friend zoned yourself. Get over it. All right, there. That's the end of my speech there. This anime will teach you that. <laughs> final final question for the show, okay? We all know that everyone was a fan of Elf Yamada Sensei. Elf Yamada Sensei. So how does Elf Yamada girl. Sensei compare to uh, what whatever this was? It her name Nina was it? Miyako. No, the accountant. The accountant. <clears throat> oh, the accountant. Ashley. Nina, Ashley, Hina, Ashley. So. Ashley that's what <coughs> I have the anime. Ashley. I have the anime list pulled up. Her name is Ashley. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, different. <laughs> yeah, different. Um, but I would I compare. Think, go ahead. I would compare Era Manga more to Nayuta. I think they're more similar, not just because they sit and write naked, not just because they're <laughs> prodigies. Um, just their personalities are are very close. Um, I'm. I'm. I would bet on it that if uh, Itsuki called Nayuta out and was like, all right, you said you want to have sex, let's have sex, she would be shy she, about it. Yeah. And that's <laughs> what that's what Aramanga did as well. Ashley is just kind of like this one-off character who is like out of control. Like <laughs> she's she's just out there and fucking has a great personality, knows she's how the to best manipulate character in the men. Show. Everyone knows this. <laughs> no, definitely knows how to manipulate men and gets uh fun out of it, gets a rise out of it and just I I think they're different. I think like and I said to I would keep her customers. To, <laughs> oh, for sure. She definitely has ulterior motives. Like she <laughs> she knows. She's she's about good customer service, you know. Did you just imagine me with my maid outfit falling off as your star 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 enters my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ridiculous. Fucking he nice. did. But Elf Yamada would be a good character in this show. She would fit in, I think, somewhere. She is Nayuta. I mean, they're, yeah. they're exactly but the But they same could add me. her in and have two, okay? Well, uh, no. Yes, it's too have much. two. Have there's two. a reason, there's a reason they they mention Haganai and... Um, it's never enough. Ori or emo over yeah they Aramanga don't sensei they don't want to mention Aramanga the other sensei show. is shit. they don't want to mention bad anime <laughs> they're like why would we mention a shit show <laughs> yeah that yeah, is yeah, 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 basically yeah. the same plot but worse never enough elf yamada sensei all right so uh okay. moving on to our last part we're gonna kind of discuss some news um so this past weekend we went to BlizzCon. So do you guys want to each briefly talk about your experiences at BlizzCon? Drew, I know this was your first one, so why don't we hear from you first? Yeah, I'm a big Blizzard fan. Um, been playing WoW for years, Overwatch, pretty much most of uh, Blizzard's games. Awesome. It, was, it was a good experience. Yeah, fuck that game. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, get super, super good experience. Nice to kind of see all of Blizzard's fans come together. I know some of Blizzard's fans can be a little bit toxic. Um, Blizzard can do no wrong in uh, that sense. I don't agree with that. Um, there's plenty that Blizzard has done wrong in the past. Uh, but overall, it, it was uh, it was a good experience. I'm kind of, and I was talking to Alec a little bit about this, I'm kind of burnt out on cons just because... It, they're kind of like the it thing to do now. And then you just have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people, even though like this was limited and things like that. But it just it becomes line simulator at some point. It's you're standing in line for a 10 to 15 minute experience. And you're like, OK, is this like a valuable use of my time for me? Probably not. Um, I could be doing so many other things. Um but in terms of like the overall experience, like definitely fun. Um, you get exclusive things that you can never get anywhere else, which um, which was cool. You know, I got a bunch of pins that were like sets of uh, 1500 or sets of 3000. Um, so, I mean, it's cool for that. But at the end of the day, it's like you standing in line for this one thing. Is it is it really worth it for me? I don't know. I'm still on the border. It's like I'm leaning towards probably not worth it in terms of my time. But overall, it, it's fun just to go and like see everybody hang out. Um, I'm there more for like friends than I am for the actual con experience. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like you got to you got to judge it as a useful amount of your time because like 
really at the end of the day like we we stood in line for pins and we got exclusive pins we also got um, to the pin line yeah that's yeah. that's that's our own fault but you know stood in line for pins um we got to watch you know some some esports which you could have done at home and twitch chat um and like it's it, not the same really experience. that's yeah it's it's not it's sure it's not the same experience but you know, you could you could still experience it in a different way, uh, which for me, you know, watching it at home versus watching it there, like I would have been fine watching it at home. So I don't know. It's 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 a lot of line simulator. Um, you know, it, take that as you will. If you enjoy certain things, um, it, it might be a good experience. But <coughs> at the end of the day, you just got to judge it. Is it a useful amount of your time? And for me, like I said, I'm leaning towards probably not. Um, but I liked going up there. I liked, you know, drinking and hanging out with you guys and our other friends as well. Um, but in terms of like a unique Blizzard experience, other than like the exclusives that I got, I can, I can, it can be missed for me. Like I, I, I don't care one way or the other. Um, um, okay, Alec, your thoughts? So I enjoyed it. Um, I do, I do think that we waited in line for the exclusive pins for a long time. I think we ended up there for two and a half to three hours. We also did leave our Airbnb late <clears throat> and got there after people had already been admitted into it. I I think that leaving our hotel or wherever we are staying uh, earlier next time and getting there and waiting outside for an hour as opposed to three hours inside would be worth my time. If instead of waiting for three hours in line for pins, I wait for 15 minutes to 30 minutes because an hour and a half is still half the time of three hours. Um, so I think next time I go, if I want to try and get those exclusives right off the bat, I'm going to leave wherever I'm sleeping earlier. Um, but the rest of it, I think <clears throat> um, like there isn't anything too crazy about it. It's nice because it's not super packed compared to other cons. <clears throat> like Comic-Con, the last year I went to Comic-Con was just absurd. It was like 125,000 people in a con meant for not that many. And it was like, it was like being cattle herded places. And it's just like impossible to move around. Having only 30,000 people in a area that's clearly meant for more is, is nice. Cause you can actually kind of get around and breathe. Um, and breathe. Uh, watching mm -hmm. it, watching like the esports online, it's like close to what you get. It's you just don't get the crowd. With the crowd, it's it's pretty fun. I think what I enjoyed most about being at the esports with like the whole crowd was for you know obviously the crowd experience, but then also being able to just like joke about things that happened there, like sure for doing the finger gun or whatever, the McCree, as McCree yeah, and joking yeah. about how he's going to roll and then get up like really awkwardly, like he hurt himself or something like, and, and like joking with my friends while there, it makes it worthwhile for me. Like being able to see all that stuff with you guys was just like more fun than if we were to be on discord talking about it right. just because then we can go wait in line for food for 25 minutes and then have Steve be like, Hey, can you give me a pretzel too? And then I'm just sitting there like, Steve, <laughs> really? Like you're going to ask me two minutes before I'm up at the front. Like, can you give me a pretzel? It's like, fuck off, Steve. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but like, I think, I think if we had avoided that pin line, it wouldn't have felt so much like line simulator still a little bit, but, um, all in all, well, I, I enjoyed it. I'm going to try and go back again next year. I hope everybody can get tickets. Uh, I hope we can all go as a group again. And I think we're, I'm definitely going to try and do some things differently because I've, this will be the third year I've gone. And every time I've gone, I've changed what I do a little differently. And I think next year I'll, I'll definitely make some changes and make it more enjoyable for me. Cause you're like, well, I did this wrong. If I do this instead, it'll be easier. And then you can enjoy yeah. enjoy it a little more. Like I really enjoyed going to OGs with the five of us and just yeah. chilling there. Yeah, that was one that was one of like the best things we did. Like Yeah. <laughs> well, Alec, like, I want to go mm -hmm. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, that's fine. I'm done. <laughs> oh, I I just wanted to ask you because last year you and I waited in the pin line. Um but we had gone after the exclusives had sold out and the pin yeah. the pin line was way shorter of a yeah. wait. I think maybe possibly that could have clouded how long you thought the line could have been for the exclusives because you know like you probably <clears throat> thought like 
everyone's going to be at opening ceremony. So if we c go during opening ceremony, like we'll wait in line and like get the exclusives and not have to worry about it. So like, would that not be, I um, guess like a fair assessment? So like you just didn't expect a three what, hour wait. I think, no, I didn't expect a three hour wait because last year when I went, they only had two exclusive pins this year. They had four. Um, and I think the year before that there weren't really exclusive pins because two years ago, the first year I went was the first year that they did or sorry, four years ago, I went one year skipped. And then anyways, so my first year was the first year they introduced the collectible random pins. The next year I went was, um, yeah, so I got series one, then series three and now series four. So I went three years or, uh, four no, years. Ago. I went last year and then two years before that. So four years ago and then one year after when I went last year, for series the series three stuff i went up there and i was like oh the line is pretty long but it was nowhere near three hours long and then when i came back the exclusives were all gone i think because of the popularity of the pin stuff and the exclusives the line was substantially longer this year and i did not anticipate that even though i should have um so i was assuming if i go i'll probably wait an hour um it ended up being three hours so <clears throat> i thought that i could get there a little later and and still like not wait in line for three hours and i because like after it's done you wait in line for like 30 minutes at the most for pin the pin line and mm -hmm. um and that's mm -hmm. like bearable for me three hours was on the verge of not bearable after i got my pins and i saw them it was definitely like worth it to me because i'm a pin collector um but i could see why you could oh it was not. worth it for me as well too mm -hmm. like I, I definitely think it was worth it and at the end of the day like i got everything i wanted <clears throat> It's it's just like <clears throat> some of the things you you can get online, some of the things you can, mm -hmm. but it's just like what what is for, uh, like I said the, for me time it, like mm -hmm. time is money to me like and if I'm not making a good use of my time, I feel like I've wasted my time. So like with that said, it's like is it is it worth it to kind of go to these cons? And I I think it is. I think BlizzCon just because you know it. I think BlizzCon is worth it. Yeah, like definitely definitely BlizzCon is worth it. Um I know Rolanda you've been to Dragon Con. That con is not worth going to no. because there's too many too people. Many lines too. There are no exclusives and it is it is multiply BlizzCon by like 10 times and you have like an even longer line simulator. The only and the only reason I go or have gone to Dragon Con in the past is to take pictures. That that is definitely prime for that, and you're not standing in line. You're just walking around and taking pictures of you interesting costumes and things for that like either. that. And that's awesome. You can just walk around downtown yeah, Atlanta exactly. and take pictures. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but if you are trying one. to do any, if you are trying to do anything at Dragon Con, you're standing in line for six plus hours for a thirty minute event, and that is not worth it to me. <laughs> Same thing with Comic Con for the most part. Like, and and at the end of the day, there's nothing exclusive for Comic Con and things like that. Well, I mean, I'm sure there is, but nothing that I want. There are some. Whereas like, you know, just exclusives. Yeah, yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> but you know, whereas like there's this Blizzard game, and I've supported. Blizzard Blizzard for years and things like that. It, it, I was, it was cool to get some of these plushies that you know you can't get anymore, or it was cool to get like these pins that are exclusive, and I'm I'm happy I got them. Um, but in terms of like cons in general, and I know we're going to talk about Anime Expo here in a second, but in terms of cons in general, like unless it's a small con, shout outs to Rush and Momo Con. That was that was another excellent one that I went to. But these big ones like Comic Con and Dragon Con, I'm I'm done with them. <laughs> like. For sure. I think, yeah, like this is my second year going to BlizzCon and I definitely feel like I had a better experience this year than last year just because I knew what to avoid from my experiences <laughs> last year. Like granted, I feel like the one outlier from this year was Alec, you and Drew waiting in line for three hours for pins. Yeah. I don't think anyone could have anticipated that, but no, um, it was just because they have a whole new building i i wasn't sure how I it was going to work with a i knew i think part of that stuff. part of that too was the organization because they just let everybody mm. into the dark moon fair and it was like a madhouse inside yeah. whereas when we got there alec it was like it was yeah exactly it was starting to get more organized and so we were actually in the right place whereas people just jumped into the uh mm. the ropes of the pin line mm. and so it was probably a madhouse in there but once it got more organized yeah. i think it would have gone faster I next so i think next better. year yeah. yeah next year will be better because they'll anticipate that for it'll sure. be better for them because they'll know how the new building is going to work best like because yeah, yeah. they obviously don't want to create a fire hazard they don't want pissed off people mm -hmm. and then we it'll be better for us 
because we'll know we need to get there a little earlier and we will. And mm-hmm. then we won't wait in line for three hours, maybe an hour mm-hmm. at most. Like, and I don't mind an hour wait. Like I've waited an hour for yeah. plenty of things and at, at an hour to get exclusives. All right, cool. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. But <clears throat> even um, the three hours I was fine with, but yeah. it's, it's just, it was on it's, the it's a lot of time. <laughs> if it went to five hours, I would have gotten out of line. I would have said no, oh, yeah. no exclusive. Like if we were hitting the four and a half, I would have said, dude, like unless we were in those ropes, if we were still out in that hallway at four and a half hours, I would have said, let's just beat it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, but yeah, I all, just was going to say, um, I don't think that this should be like the defining moment for your, for you, Drew, the waiting in our, or a three hour line, because that's definitely <laughs> not like the norm for the majority of the BlizzCon <laughs> stuff. Oh no, I'm and I'm not I'm not saying that that was a bad part. Like I thought it was worth it, like hundred yeah. percent. But it's just like these cons nowadays. They're just it's just out of control yeah. with like, like I said, it's the thing to do, so everybody does it, and it's 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 just a lot. And for me, it's like, is the time investment worth it? For this, I think it was, and I'll I'll definitely try to go back. Um, I definitely enjoyed the experience. Um, but it's just like it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot, and you have to you have to be like mentally and physically um, prepared for it. I know, like you hurt your foot and stuff like that. It, it it's a long weekend. Yeah, you um, make sure physically you have, and like, mentally proper like, clothes that you're comfortable in, shoes that are comfortable, mm. like a backpack. You gotta be comfortable being around weird fucking people. people like we talked smell. to like, a bunch of weird fuckers. Like, like you're gonna have some. There's dudes behind us, Rolando. You <laughs> like, just need to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Well, moving on from BlizzCon, let's briefly touch upon the rest of these uh, topics. So, um, speaking of another con, Anime Expo, everyone know mm-hmm. that's a uh, listener knows how much we complained about the line simulator that was God. Saturday uh, of God. this year. Um, speaking of three-hour lines with no uh, payoff, that was a big lines. pain in the ass. Yeah, four hours. <laughs> So now Anime Expo has uh, decided to mail badges, something that we I had know. talked about on the show. So uh, they to do. Yeah, maybe they're listening. I maybe will, they're listening. Maybe, right? They're <laughs> listeners to our show. Welcome, Anime Expo. I will go back because they have this mailing badge thing. Yeah, definitely. Because I didn't definitely. mind the con because there wasn't anything that I wanted to see that I had to wait in line for. Yeah. So I didn't. The only thing that felt like line simulator to me was actually trying to get in. And then when I went yep. back another day there was no line for me to get in cause everyone already done it. And so they also opened I will, the doors. <clears throat> yeah. And they opened all the doors. <laughs> so I will definitely go back and try it again. Cause I think it was cool to wander around, take pictures of like the cosplay. And then, and I like the convention, that center, that convention center was yeah. pretty cool. So like, I would definitely, I, I'm going to try and go back next time. We all try to go back, but now me too. I, I, I want to do it. I want to do it too. And I will buy my badge ahead of time. I will have it, it mailed to me. Yeah. I can actually go in and get my Katori plushie and be like happy, you know? <laughs> yeah. And be like, Hey, I got the one thing I wanted. That was the other thing when I was there, there was, it's kind of like comic con in that where unless you're waiting for panels, there aren't lines. The, like there are so many booths selling a lot of the same stuff yeah. that you don't like you may wait behind one person at a booth like hey yeah. oh they're in line okay oh you bought it okay i'm gonna buy it now like it's the same with comic-con when you're in the exhibitionist mm-hmm. floor what are exhibitioners floor? exhibition exhibitionist yeah <laughs> the, exhibition hall. <laughs> the exhibition <laughs> hall the exhibition hall um with all the uh <laughs> with all the sale people you know like you can just be like, oh, there's a line here. I'm going to walk to that one 30 feet that way and buy the same thing for the same price or less. Yeah. And so <clears throat> personally, cons like Anime Expo and Comic-Con, the, what I like most about them is the that hall. I don't really care about the panels. I never really watched any of the panels at Comic-Con. I watched some. Um, and so I just like I, I had fun when I went and I wandered around alone. I wandered around alone for like six hours before um, – Rolando and Mark were free. And oh, I was yeah, just after, taking before, pictures of cosplay. Before we were done with I met a couple streamers. Yeah. Like I met a c co- I met a couple people. I saw what's her name? The I don't remember her name. Um anyways, so it was fun. I'll go back. 
And that's what, that's why I'll recommend like Momocon and things like that. The same experience that you're describing. Not a ton of lines. Mm-hmm. You can go and play Japanese arcade games there. <clears throat> you can go to the um, the uh, the sellers hall and things like that. Buy stuff and just overall a better time. Um, no lines. Just walking around, talking to weebs, things like that. So I, I like those smaller. Yeah, that same thing. You know, small small sellers room. Um, taking pictures like not feeling like your cattle like yeah. any of these big ones anymore i'm i'm done with it on a doki <laughs> con is definitely it. a one day con though um you can do it all mm-hmm. in one day i don't unless they have like different things on different days like different music yeah. or whatever but or like something you want to see like a guest or something yeah. yeah but um that was a fun one too actually i had fun chilling there drinking beer talking to all the cosplayers so we're gonna do it next year like yeah, it, yeah, that yeah, was, yeah, yeah like yeah. the set the setting was good yeah. the cosplay was good mm-hmm. etc so yeah 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 all right. And so um, <clears throat> briefly to touch on a couple other topics. So the League of Legends World 2017 finals occurred. And oh. as I expected, yep. Faker. But what some people Faker. may have not expected was that SKT lost to Samsung in the finals. Um, <clears throat> Faker. Yep. So Faker finally being dethroned and it. Faker. Coming to the coming by the hands of the team that he uh, put down last year, so that was. What kind I didn't of expect though was the smash that it was three zero. Yeah. I did not expect three zero. I did not expect yeah, SKT yeah. to get three would Like was that it three zero? Unexpected. I didn't. It was three zero. Yeah. SKT was, didn't win a single 3-0. game. Yeah. Wow. The yep. first game, yep. SKT didn't even kill anyone. It was like eight, it was eight to zero or something. The first game, the first game was eight to zero. The second game was like nine to three, and then the last one was sixteen to thirteen. It like the games weren't close. Wow. Like the last one sounded close, but it was three to zero, and the first two were smashes. Retire. They were all like retire. thirty-five minute games though, long, but they got smashed, and so yeah. I was not expecting that. That was unexpected. I was already <laughs> estimating this result because every year they'd gone to the finals, they had lost one more game. So I thought it was going to be <laughs> yeah. like 3-2 against them. <laughs> yeah. But the no, fact that it's 3-0, they really uh, you know, fell, nice. fell down. But I my estimate was that they would lose and that their bot lane, Bang & Wolf, for, unfortunately, I think you're going to get replaced. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's a one-year contract with Prey and Gorilla on Longju. So I have a feeling we're going to get maybe a reuniting of... Uh, <clears throat> Of rocks tigers on SKT. Who are people knows? getting old on SKT, or are they just getting? Is like, are they getting cocky? Because to lose three zero, the the team like, itself, fuck. I feel like was put together poorly this year. Mm-hmm. So you have your issues top lane with Huni and Untara. Like you bringing you're bringing in Untara because Huni is kind of like a wild card in a sense. He's very mechanically talented, but sometimes you don't know if he's gonna. Try, start crying go just... go dive into a 1v2 or if he's gonna <laughs> like hard carry your team whereas you mean he's not consistent like dyrus who just always gets camped yes whereas you also <laughs> have the jungle issue where you've got blank who is completely <laughs> terrible in season six and was a god in season seven and you brought in peanut to kind of you know replace blank last because he performed poorly last year and the meta kind of shifted away from the carry junglers and he kind of fell off the map so they Peanut, i don't know yeah. if it could have been avoided but like on paper their roster looked good from the start but just doesn't kind of mesh when you're always changing your roster and it's a very team oriented game but then <clears throat> that's kind of a contrast too to as i hate to say it tsm <clears throat> who they change their roster a lot and then they get dicked on but it just I think it comes down to having that yeah, I can't I can't fight it anymore, but their coach just is godlike, dude. <laughs> like cause he has these changes and he still manages to just take the team and like oh, yeah. make oh, something my. of it. He's he's a conceited asshole, but he's good. Like <laughs> it's just is, is Coma conceited? Oh, I guess like you're probably judging it out of the fact that he said he could take any Western team and bring them to yeah, finals. off of no, like I mean, beyond that, I don't know if he is, but from that statement, he's you know in that Prove regard, it. he's a little Prove conceited. It. Like, oh, <laughs> I can make anyone good. But, like, he kind of just proved it. I mean, he did take Faker plus four others. And Faker's, like, really good. But one player does not win Worlds. So, yeah. 
Anyways. It's a team game. <clears throat> All right. So, Drew, do you want to discuss these Better last case. couple topics? The um, You can go ahead. There's Crunchyroll and PA Works, all that. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about first the uh, Crunchyroll hack. Uh, I know we woke up on uh, the last day of BlizzCon to our buddy Mark, who is a fan and also been on the show. Uh, he wakes up and he goes, hey, guys, did you hear that Crunchyroll got hacked? And I'm like, what? <laughs> so apparently uh, they were targeting on Saturday the uh, Dragon Ball Super crowd, uh, which I know a ton of people watch Dragon Ball Super, my roommate being one of them and like my other friends who like aren't into anime but love Dragon Ball Z. Um, they watch super every week. So definitely a good, uh, <laughs> target for that. Uh, but anyway, they, uh, they targeted that crowd, a DNS hack, uh, where, uh, basically they forced, um, a download on people and it was encrypting your hard drive and sending all that personal information to the, uh, the hacker source and things like that. <laughs> Luckily, um, they got that taken care of within a day. Um, everything's good to go now. So, uh, no need to worry about that when you're, uh, listening now, but you know, kind of, kind of scary. Uh, if you think about it, guys, like, you know, we just, we're coming here to watch some anime. We don't want, uh, we don't want our wife who's being, um, you know, Sullied. taking us down, I guess the, the, the Sundere virus, I think they're calling it cause it had a picture of Tyga on it <laughs> and she's, she, she's killing your hard drives. So I, I, I don't, I, I don't think anybody, I would never click on that, that icon. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> unless there's like a multi-week old news like thing from crunchy saying hey we're working on a new something mm -hmm, like mm -hmm, and then you're like mm -hmm. oh it's gonna be released and then they give a firm date on the release or yeah. if i'm downloading an app from the app store on you know something and it's like the proven app or whatever i'm not just gonna be like yeah let me yeah. download this thing that sounds awesome like what? People, and then it has a picture a lot of, of people Tyga? though just really <laughs> a lot of people just want their their super though dude they just they want their, their Dragon Ball super and <laughs> I mean that, that was crowd. that was the time to do it if you're going to do it like pray on that I mean, crowd and, and, so, get it like, on the high seas guys I, get it on the high seas. There, there's way well, more casuals in that I mean, crowd yeah, it's true. Well, and that's what I was that's what I was going to say too. Like I came home from uh from BlizzCon and I'm like to my roommate like, "Oh, hey, did you like go on Crunchyroll today? Like they're hacked." And he's like, "What?" <laughs> Luckily, he was watching it from uh, his PlayStation, so like oh, so uh, none of the, the apps app were actually affected. <clears throat> yeah, it was just the website. Right. Um, but he's like, yeah, I probably would have done it. Like, <laughs> so, I mean, there, there's that risk. So luckily, hopefully none of you got affected by it. Um, be but just be wary, uh, yeah. when you're out there for sure. Uh, moving, moving on a little bit though. Uh, we have, and this was like news maybe a week ago, uh, but PA works our guys, uh, of, uh, glass lip fame. Mm -hmm. Um, I love glass also so Sakura, Sakura quest. I mean, that less known show than glass lip. Um, and a few others, uh, they have announced, uh, and they're a very big studio, they have announced that they are taking their uh, illustrators and animators to um, hourly rates. So instead of the salary where they're getting paid like, you know, um, 20,000 USD um, a year, oh. they're getting an hourly rate, which, well, probably less than that, right? <laughs> that's, that's less than but, uh, uh, being a teacher in the United States. And yeah, the cost of living in Japan is bad. probably about the same. It's 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 really bad. So we're hoping, and we talked about this a little bit. We're hoping that this um, less than working gives us target. higher. Yeah, we're hoping <laughs> that this gets higher quality anime. We're hoping that people are reinvigorated to come back to the industry who have been pushed out because of um, the lack of salary and things like that. Also so less outsourcing. You'll know, pay these guys. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. We've talked about quality of episodes and things like that. So. We're hoping, you know, in the future, this gives us higher, higher quality episodes, higher quality animation, things like that. I think it will. I hope it becomes a trend because these guys deserve it. They're working like 80 hour weeks and probably more um, at some point mm -hmm. to, to push this stuff out and new seasons, you know, every year and things like that. It's it's a crazy, grueling industry. So and if you don't think I that's a lot of hours, that's a lot of hours, dude. That's, that's twice a, a full time hours, work like, week. Yeah. I've worked 72 I make, one week in my entire life yeah. and I wanted to die and I will never do that again. Like I, <laughs> like, ever. like I was, I was going to say, I probably, I probably make five to six times that 
like working in one week than they do like for that week like that's insane like how can anybody live on that it's it's insanity and i do less work than them and i just i just feel bad i want i want high quality waifus i want high quality anime quality pay these guys waifus. they 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 deserve it and especially because the industry is so fucking huge over there just not only the anime but the blu-ray sales mm-hmm. the figures the merchandise like pay the pay these guys they they deserve it so um i think you guys agree mm-hmm. you guys agree yeah Definitely. Just like teachers. So, uh, the final thing, uh, the final thing that we wanted to announce and look forward uh, look forward to, uh, Attack on Titan season three has yeah. been announced for July two thousand eighteen. So summer yeah. season, uh, two thousand eighteen. I'm looking forward to it. I know you guys are looking forward yeah. to it. It's definitely a show that we're going to mm-hmm. cover. So uh, we just wanted to shout that out. Uh, shout we out. will be covering it, um, and we're definitely looking forward to it. Woo. Um, but other than that, I think I think that's all I had for announcements. Um, Rolando, did you want to you want to wrap it up for us? Yeah. So um, we've got we had quite the episode today. We have two weeks of coverage to go through, but we got through it. Good job, guys. A little so, bit over, but we're good. Yeah. Shouldn't but shouldn't be like this. Uh, we're I think we're kind of getting back on track after this week in the yeah. convention and with, stuff. So. With BlizzCon, it, it screwed us over. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so um, as always, you can find everything related to anime on draft at anime on draft.wordpress.com. You can also subscribe to our Twitter and we are at anime on draft. And then we are on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Look up anime on draft. Again, you can find all of that at anime on draft at wordpress.com. So final words from everybody. Thanks for listening and look, staying with us to the end. <laughs> Look, uh, look to the SoundCloud first. We usually get that out first. So if you're if you're dying to hear the episode, uh, check that out before uh, YouTube. Yes, please subscribe to the iTunes or SoundCloud. All right, yeah. bye bye. Get us right away. Bye bye. Ah! Let's cut that out. No, leave it. <laughs>